Let's talk about Tim Keller. <laughs> I just feel like anytime Tim Keller gets brought up, it's only to like, just like bash the guy. And to me, that's, that's crazy. I love Tim Keller. I'll say it on my channel. You guys can clip it out. I love Tim Keller. Let me, I love Tim Keller. I stand by that. Tim Keller is one of the most influential writers God has used in my life. And today, this morning, uh, he passed away at the age of 73 after a battle with pancreatic cancer. And I wanted to just record a video saying thank you to Tim. And if his family were to stumble across this, uh, and for anyone else who has been impacted by his writing, I just want to show my thankfulness for God using Tim Keller uh, at a unique time. You know, I, I wish that we had more pastors and theologians like Tim Keller who were younger and active today, um, because I think we need people like that, humble voices, faithful voices that despite so many people who, I mean, Tim Keller was a lightning rod over the last couple of years of people um, calling him names, saying he's being used by Satan, like, oh my goodness, so much stuff. Uh, I mean, just go and watch anything that came out of Shepherd's Conference this past year. For some reason, Tim Keller has been looked at as this threat to the church for some, but the vast majority of us have been impacted by his writing in a very positive way. And in his writing, I think you got to know him a little bit. You know, it's not like any of us, well, maybe some of you, but it's not like I knew him personally, or I've, I've never even met the man. Uh, but when I was reading him, I felt like I knew him and he seemed smart. He seemed like an intellectual who was actually humble, who wasn't condescending to you, but explaining things to you in a way that you could understand. And sometimes theologians don't understand how to do that part. Uh, so I thought it would be kind of fun to just give five books that have impacted me from Tim Keller. And that list was actually pretty hard to make. I had to leave off books like that I really love, like The Gospel and Life and some of the books that you see back there and up there. But I got I to gotta talk about this for a minute. Center Church. If you're a church planter, this is a must, like an absolute must. I don't know how you plant a church right now and you don't use this. If you don't, like you're doing yourself a disservice because this could be very helpful. Um, but also, if you're just involved in ministry, and I'm not talking about just being an elder, like, the senior pastor. I'm talking about a lay elder. I'm talking about deacons. This is a book that would be helpful for you on how to do ministry. What are some of the methods that you should employ? What are the things you need to be thinking about for different arenas of ministry? This is an amazing, helpful, practical book that also doesn't shy away from, you know, what should be some of the motivations behind things, uh, what, what should be some of the theological concerns you should have about this? Like it's all of it. And I so appreciate this book. It's one that I reference often, and I think that you should too. So if you haven't read this, go and get it. Um, another one would be prayer, a very simple book, uh, a book that you think like, oh, it's just prayer. Do we need another book on prayer? I think that we did because this book explains things in a very easy to understand way, but like we're talking about like prayer is deep. You're talking to the sovereign of the universe and like the, the idea of requesting things from the sovereign of the universe. And how does that relate to what we say in our prayers and how we feel about our prayers? And then there's just some things that Tim Keller, I think is able to do that a lot of others aren't. Just, just listen to what he says about repentance. Legalistic repentance is destructive. Paul talks about the gospel repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, which is contrasted with worldly sorrow that brings death in uh, 2 Corinthians 7. In moralistic religion, our only hope is to live a life good enough to require God to bless us. Every instance of repentance in this view of things is traumatic, 
and unnatural because it serves only to, we think, win back God's favor through our misery. Without a firm grasp of our free justification, we will admit wrongdoings only under great duress, only as a last resort. We will focus on the behavior itself and be blind to the attitudes and self-centeredness behind it. He goes on to say, while there always is some bitterness and grief and repentance, deeper realizations of sin lead to greater assurances of his grace. The more we know we are forgiven, the more we repent, the faster we grow and change, the deeper our humility and our joy. As someone who grew up in very conservative circles, uh, we didn't talk about repentance like that. And I remember the first time I read this, uh, I really needed to hear those words. And even sometimes I feel like I need to remind myself of that idea uh, that when we're praying and repenting of sin, some of the emotions that are attached to it, like, are we actually repenting or are we just getting over the bad stuff so we can get to the good stuff? What are our motivations in that repentance? I really appreciate this work. So prayer is one of those for me. Another one uh, was kind of like a fork in the road for me. I've talked about this a couple times, but uh, there there were two books on marriage that came out at the same time. And one was Real Marriage by Mark Driscoll and his wife, Grace. Uh, and another book, The Meaning of Marriage by Tim and Kathy Keller. And I am so glad that I bought this book and not the other one. <laughs> I was at a I was at a time in my life early on in ministry and I really needed to hear from a wiser older couple that wasn't going to be, you know, what's happening in the sheets, you know? <laughs> like I needed I needed more uh than that. And this book offered that. This is a conversation essentially uh between the Kellers explaining some things to us as the audience. Uh, about marriage and what it looks like and the give and takes and uh, just the, the relationship, but also the theology behind it, the covenant that is made between a man and a woman. What does that actually mean? The meaning of marriage has that. It's a theological and practical work, and I feel like that's kind of like the summary of Tim Keller's books. Deeply theological, but also very, very practical, and that's something that a lot of theologians could learn from. Um, but that's the book that whenever I'm talking premarital counseling or someone asks, you know, for a book about marriage, this is the one that I recommend. And I would encourage you to recommend it, not other really popular ones. <clears throat> Love and respect. Um, uh, next up, King's Cross. This is basically Tim Keller's sermons on the last week of Jesus' life in Mark. And uh, it's super helpful. And it's just a book about Jesus. And over and over again, on every page, he makes some um, points about who Jesus is. And it's all like, even as someone who has preached through those texts and it, it exegeted those and uh, gave that to congregations, I was always like, what? <laughs> like, even uh, there, I remember there's a, a part in here about uh, the fig tree and Jesus being hungry. And balancing like the anger that Jesus uh, Jesus displays in that moment with the the compassion that we see so often in that same passage, and how do these two things go hand in hand? Like those kinds of realizations that Tim Keller is just amazing at bringing out of a text, uh, I found super helpful. So this would be a really fun one, a light read, just a, a real encouraging read because you're talking about Jesus basically the whole time. Uh, and then my number one Tim Keller book is one that I think has probably the best chance of being something like J.I. Packer's Knowing God, uh, in that it'll be a book that is read for generations. Um, and that is The Reason for God. This is the greatest work on apologetics in the last 50 years. All respect to R.C. Sproul. <laughs> uh, some great stuff. RC wrote about apologetics. Uh, but this is it. Like this is a book. If you want to help people understand uh, the gospel, who Jesus is, the claims of Christianity, not berate them, but help them understand and then let them make decisions. This is the book. This is the book to have. 
Uh, it is not a book that's written down to people uh, just to criticize the atheists or uh, to mock the secular world. A lot of apologetic works are like that. Uh, Tim Keller's isn't. It is just basically, here's what following Jesus means and uh, contrasting that with atheism and other forms of religion uh, and really, uh, really focusing on, you know, skepticism. So uh, this, this is the book that I recommend all the time when it comes to apologetics. If you love apologetics and you haven't read this book, then I don't know what you're doing. You need to read this book. This is one of those books that's going to stand the test of time. I really believe that. It's a profound work, and it's a simple work. It's not one that's just for the intellectuals. It's one for everybody, and that's that's why I love Tim Keller's writings, because it's someone who is way smarter than me, explaining things to me in a way that I can understand, and never Never have I felt talked down to when I write, read Tim Keller. And that is like an amazing thing. <laughs> so um, those are just some of the books that I would recommend from Tim Keller. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you what you have been blessed by with Tim Keller. And be in prayer for the Keller family. Um, you know, they saw this coming. Uh, so it's not a surprise, but, you know, they're grieving. And like any of us who have grieved, we know how difficult that is, even if you see things coming. Uh, so just be in prayer for the Keller family. Be in prayer for uh, Redeemer uh, in New York, uh, for uh, the Church Network, for Gospel Coalition. In that way, there are a lot of people who have been affected by Tim Keller's ministry, um, his his writing, his physical ministry, just him as a person. And so just be in prayer for people. It's one of the biggest losses that we've had since R.C. Sproul. So. Um, let me know what you think about all this uh, down in the comment section, and I will see you in the next one.